I'm here at the IDFC Mutual Fund uh, office. They have launched a new balance uh, fund and as uh, most of you would be aware that uh, you know most of the CIOs, CEOs of mutual fund industry says that balanced funds have got a lot more traction. Uh, on the sidelines of the conference, I have the CEO at IDFC Mutual Fund. So firstly, thank you so much for taking our time for our viewers. Could you just first tell us about the balanced fund, how popularity of balanced funds has increased and what's so different about IDFC balanced fund? Firstly, I think uh, the category of balanced fund has seen more recently a lot of uh, sales attractiveness and traction. Uh, largely maybe coming out of the fact that because it is a good combination of both equity and fixed income and you see opportunities across both these asset classes, it makes it a very attractive uh, proposition to combine it into one fund and then be able to you know, uh, allow the fund management team to rebalance it and manage it actively rather than an investor trying to manage two or three different products to achieve the same combination. Now, the fund that we are launching today uh, is unique because of the allocation as well as the fund management trigger and team that it offers. The allocation, as we have specified, will be up to 60% in equity and the balance in fixed income. What that does is that it reduces the risk profile of the fund as compared to many of the other balanced funds in the market. Uh, it also makes it therefore more attractive for an initial or a low risk investor or a moderate investor into balanced funds. Now the 60% allocation to equity does give you a sufficient amount of growth impetus and that will be managed dynamically, it will be managed with a diversified uh, profile uh, with a large cap bias. The 40% in fixed income gives the allocation a sufficient meat or sufficient weight uh, to bring about more stability and opportunities in fixed income. Uh, so what it does is it offers a very good package of both growth and stability being positioned at a more modest or moderate level of risk than many other balanced funds in the market. Uh, of course, it is offered through the IDFC mutual fund stable where you do have a very experienced set, set of mutual fund uh, of, of managers, as well as when we look at the risk return profile of a 60-40 fund, it does put it as very attractive relative to uh, either extreme of the asset class that we are looking at. Right. And, you know, do you think that the investor viewing of mutual funds have changed? So now they're investing for long run and in the long run, balance fund tend to give similar returns as equity? So balance fund will have a lower risk profile than equity. And when we adjust risk uh, to the returns that balance funds give, give us, uh, then statistically, at least the indices tell us that uh, return per unit of risk tends to be very attractive for balance funds, uh, which is making them more and more popular. So if you look at many first-time investors who are looking at uh, at starting off with equity, with a meaningful allocation in equity, that is, uh, this could be an attractive uh, proposition. Also, people who are moderating the risk profile, having been in equity for a large part and then they want to reduce the risk, a balanced fund like this could be actually a good tool. So at both ends of the spectrum, people who are looking to build risk and people who are looking to reduce risk, this could be very attractive. We do see, therefore, this fund to be a part of the core of someone's long-term portfolio. Right. Uh, you know, apart from this, uh, you know, the, our economy is going to a transition phase. We are seeing a lot of changes happening. And the recent one, of course, is demonetization. Now, what some of the economists have told us is that real estate and gold would probably become less attractive after demonetization. How do you think mutual fund industry will benefit from this? Maybe not now because there is a puncture effect in the economy, but when things are normal? I think structurally, formalization of the economy, which is that more and more income and assets coming into the recorded area, uh, does have a structural benefit on all financial savings, which is in the formal sector, be it deposits or mutual funds. Now, what we do see is that, of course, most savers tend to be already overweight on fixed income and deposits or insurance or uh, some sort of retirement products, etc. They tend to be underweight on capital market or equity exposures. Now, what we therefore see is that a product like a mutual fund, which can offer them a full spectrum from fixed income to, to equity to you know, even sectoral equity, etc., uh, can be a very, very uh, big beneficiary out of this formalization process because as uh, more and more uh, people keep their money in the formal sector, uh, it will look for eventually moving out to chase some amount of growth. Uh, maybe it will start off first with a bit of uh, fixed income exposures, you know, looking at higher yields than what a bank deposit may offer, uh, therefore forcing them to come into some fixed income funds. But eventually look at growth through either balance funds or equity funds or a combination of, of, of these. So structurally, I think the demonetization exercise uh, does move 
uh, or encourage moving a lot of the savings into the formal sector and mutual funds should benefit significantly on that. Right. In terms of mutual fund inflows, what we've seen so far in the last two years, do you see a change in the behavior pattern? The new generation is ready to take risk, ready to invest into mutual funds. And also our mutual fund industry is now sufficiently old. So, you know, if you look at the top four companies, there is sufficient data to research and try and invest into them. So I think we are seeing a lot of maturity coming in in the customer base. Uh, so when we see days of extreme volatility, uh, several years back we would have a lot of panic calls and people calling about whether they should redeem and you know what should they do, etc. Now conversely we are seeing a lot more stability, a lot of people looking at that as an opportunity to invest more. Uh, the pool of SIPs has been growing steadily, which is another great sign that uh, there are long-term investors who are understanding how to benefit uh, from both asset classes coming in. Uh, we have to keep in mind that fixed income also presents a significant opportunity given its liquidity and the, and the way it is managed and the additional yield you could look at, uh, especially at times when banks are going to be flush with funds and therefore deposit rates may not be very attractive. So across both asset classes, there are, I think, very, very good reasons why uh, increasing number of new customers are choosing mutual funds. And once they've experienced it through a cycle, uh, they want to continue to build and grow. So the length of the average investor is continuously increasing in the mutual fund industry to that extent. Right. And in terms of you know the rates that you mentioned, we have RBI policy coming up. And you know rates are expected to come down because there might be liquidity shortage here. Uh, so do you, uh, sorry, uh, liquidity excess uh, in, in our markets. Uh, do you expect that, you know, say if rates, deposit rate moves to four, five, five and a half percent, equities may be the only one of the attractive classes? So these are cycles maybe, uh, maybe too early to call, but uh, you know, that's, that's how globally you would see uh, things pan out, which is when uh, yields or interest rates become too low relative to you know, what the expectation is. Then there is uh, less opportunity cost, in a sense, of keeping your money uh, or moving your money out of, out of fixed deposits or fixed in income bearing instruments and taking a bit more risk. Uh, the other structural benefit may be the core growth story which itself uh, should pan out, and I think there are many varied estimates about what the longer-term benefit of demonetization will be to the economy, to earnings growth, etc. So I think both these factors combined uh, may see the industry being poised quite well in terms of attracting more equity flows over the medium to long term. Right. In terms of markets, uh, what is your view after the recent correction? We are fairly valued given our dynamics. We, we look at the long term, so we won't take a, we won't hazard a market uh, specific view. Uh, you know, for a long term investor, frankly, uh, if you're investing systematically, whether it's through an SIP or STP, uh, each day is a good day if you're under invested. Uh, so it's really a function of what your allocation in the asset class is. So if you're underweight in equity, you should so it certainly should look at equity. And the same thing goes for debt. If you're underweight debt for whatever reason, uh, it's an attractive asset class even today. Right. Uh, just a word on corporate profitability. You know, because of the demonetization, there will be EPS cuts. There will be a lot of you know disruptions in a lot of businesses. But as you said that you're investing for the long term, you think whenever the recovery happens, because it's just a puncher and not a structural issue, things would recover also faster. So that's the expectation. Of course, there are you know many analysts uh, doing the the hard maths as we speak, uh, but but the expectation is that the uh, the puncture, as you call it, will be short-lived. Uh, it will get repaired, and we will back on the we will be back on the trajectory of growth uh, sooner rather than later. Of course, it 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 you know it it is, it is to be seen about how quickly and what are the next set of set of measures the government does take uh, but the structural impact should eventually be a positive is the wide expectation and with that uh, you know the, the markets in general uh, should be positively poised is also the market expectation. Right. Just a last word for our viewers. We have a lot of retail viewers and we keep getting queries as to, you know, markets have fallen. Where should we invest? What should we do? Uh, you know, if somebody is looking to invest for the long term via SIP, it really doesn't matter. And if somebody is looking to invest lump sum, these are good levels to start and invest into the market? For SIPs, absolutely it doesn't matter. Uh, you should look at your current allocation. So if you are, if you don't have any allocation to equity and you're uh, you're relatively young, you can be exposed to a bit of risk. You want some growth asset, then equity does become the uh, the only real growth asset that you can you know uh, participate in today. Uh, if, if you are uh, building for the long term, an SIP or a systematic way to build the uh, portfolio becomes a very attractive way uh, today as it was yesterday. So it's it's as attractive today.
Thank you so much and all the best with the farm. Thank, thank you so much. You.